There are now so many awesome tools available that it just blows my mind. When I was doing my PhD back in the old days, there wasn't this level of uh, automation, of search quality, and there are some amazing tools that quite literally just make me say, wow. The first one I wanna show you, if you're doing your literature review and you just wanna do it as fast as possible, it's all taken care for you in this automated machine learning tool. Let's check it out. Paper Digest Digest.org has this incredible tool that is a perfect place for you to start. If we go in and just start typing water-based organic photovoltaics, we will see that it comes up with a fantastic just literature review, and you can choose from the past year, past five years, any time, and here, summary of the related work, it will give you 10 uh, citations and it will put it together in an amazing kind of paragraph. Now I like to choose the all work and what that would do is move you back to sort of like the beginnings of that research and then you can choose from the past five years and then you can say from the past year and I think those three different types of uh, paragraphs will really help you understand where the research has been, where it was kind of going and where the forefront of that research is right now. You should go through and save all of the different references and start to use these as a seed for the next step. Now a little bit of word of warning about this tool, please do not just copy and paste what it gives you. It is good, but it is not perfect, and it still relies on you as a researcher to, to go and find those specific research questions and hone in on your research uh, literature review sort of area, because you know, this is a great way to get started. Some people are really sort of confused about, well, where do you start? This is where you start. You can go in and get a paragraph that will summarize the most uh, important and and influential work around your topic. Brilliant. Then it's about reading those papers and asking yourselves questions. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract, the perfect daily schedule, and more. It's exclusive content available for free, so go sign up now. Okay, so we've done the easy thing. We've gone to a tool, typed in a research question, and it's given us three different paragraphs about the any time work, the past five years, and the past year. Now, now it's about reading those papers. And what you've got to do is read those papers and I would jot down just on a piece of paper or a simple text document on your computer all of the questions that pop into your mind because the next tool is so powerful but you do need to give it a nudge in the right direction. Here we are. This tool is illicit.org. It's a semantic search for science and I just think it is one of the most incredible tools that researchers have right now and if you don't know about it, you should. So if you head over to illicit.org, the link is in the description, you will ask a research question just like you would anything else. Just use normal language. So let's have a look. Um, what is the current state of water-based uh, organic photovoltaics? Let's give it a go. All right. One thing I love about this is that it will also give you different questions. So if you click up here, it'll also say, here's another one. What is the efficiency of water-based organic photovoltaics? How does the efficiency of blah, blah, blah? Anyway, brilliant. This is so good. What is the market size? That's another very important question that will give you sort of like an ability to write a really in-depth literature review. So one thing I love about this, and I will zoom out a little bit, is that you can choose the takeaway from the abstract, the intervention, the outcome measured, number of participants, that sort of stuff. So here, you are given essentially a takeaway from an abstract, and that is what I use to scan these papers so fast. Let's have a look. Let's sort by uh, year. So that's what we really want to do. Here we are. So 2004, 2008, 2016, uh, all the way up. We uh, Let's go the other way. Descending. There we are. That's what we want. So 2021. Citations, developing photovoltaics from health and environmentally friendly solvents is a key topic of focus for research. So here we are, we've got a review paper already. That's a perfect place to start your literature review. I can't believe that this tool is so powerful. So type in your question, have a look at other questions, make sure you've got the right information along the side and then filter. You can also um, have has PDF, which is really good. And you can export in bib or .csv for whatever service 
service you're importing it into. So now what we've done is we've used a, an automated tool to create a seed, create a, a kind of foundation from what from which to build on. And now we're adding to that using semantic search on illicit.org. Fantastic. And now we need to look at, well, how do you actually sort of visually explore the domain? And there are three tools that I really recommend. Trying to work out the order in which literature was released, how they connect, how they reference each other can be very confusing. Luckily these days, there are tools that help you visualize how research is connected. It also gives you um, uh, advice on which papers you should look for next with the uh, papers that came afterwards and before. And it really is a fantastic way to explore the research environment that you're in. The three tools that I recommend are lit maps, connected papers, and research rabbit. Let's take a look at them. So lit maps here, all you have to do is create a workspace, create a new map. I've put in one of my earliest papers from 2012. And here we can see this is what it's created for me. So here is all of the different uh, papers that are connected to it from my seed paper. Now, if I click on my seed paper, the one thing I absolutely love about this is you get these tabs here. So you get the notes and then you get the references, then you get the citations, and then you get the other sort of like um, suggestions that have been highly connected to this map. So here we can click through and see things. It's just incredible to me. I can't believe it. So I can add that to the map. Brilliant. I can go back to my seed paper and carry on searching. I love that this is all about what I already know about, but it's giving me options on the periphery of things that I should potentially know about. Brilliant. Connected papers is another one. Here, I've put in the same seed paper and you can see that it's connected. The one thing I love about connected papers is that I can see the prior works and the derivative works. So if I wanna see what happened before, all I have to do is click on prior works, there it all is. Derivative works, there it all is. Fantastic. Research Rabbit is another fantastic and powerful tool, a little bit more sort of like involved in terms of like navigation. But here is my seed paper and then you can see explore papers, the similar work. It will produce a fantastic, uh, massive, you know, a navigatable thing for you. And then you can click on things and it just allows you to explore the um, literature in a really, really user-friendly way. I must say, that of the three, my favorite is Litmaps. It is a clean interface. It is easier to navigate, I think, than all of the three. And also, it is just sort of like more user-friendly from a researcher's perspective. They've really talked about and thought about what researchers need, and I think they've put that at the forefront of their app. So head over to litmaps.com if you're not quite sure about which one to use. And I think, uh, yeah, that's probably my favorite at the moment. It may change. So there we have it. I think that is the fastest way to get your literature review started and to find all of the appropriate papers, reviews, thesis that you should know about. Now, these tools are fantastic. And then obviously you can export all that you find into your reference manager, and that'll be a whole nother video on its own. So remember to subscribe because I'll be talking about those in the future. Um, so essentially, finding research, making sure that you can use semantic search to answer the questions that pop into your mind will really help you sort of produce a summary, a story of the research that currently exists. Now go check out my videos where I talk about um, actually writing a research re uh, literature review. But overall, these are the tools that I would use first as soon as I delved into a new topic, a new field, a new whatever, a new research area, I think, it's getting incredibly exciting out there in terms of the different tools that are popping up. So let me know in the comments what ones you would add to that list. Are there any that really, really work for your research field? Let me know. Also, go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. And I'll see you in the next video.